Good afternoon, sorry, good morning, and uh, welcome to this Marks Group live class. This is Michael Friesen, excited to be here today teaching campaigns to deals overview, live and in person. Today, we are going to cover the following. We're going to look at creating a new lead. This is one of the basic fundamentals of, um, of a, using a CRM converting that new lead into an account and a contact. We're going to look at stages of deals, winning them and losing them. And we're going to look at how we can measure marketing effectiveness with campaigns. Today, uh, we're going to spend about 45 to 60 minutes going over the classwork. And then I'll leave 45 to 60 minutes for approximately for a chat discussion where I can answer any of your questions that you provide in the chat window on the right hand side of your screen. You'll find it somewhere around there. If you're viewing this on a mobile device, there should be a chat window there available as well, where I ask you to please place all your questions during our class today. By the way, that chat window will close a few minutes after the class is over, but I encourage you to continue asking questions for clarity on our main webpage, where you'll see a chat option on every page. Just mention that you're asking a question regarding a class topic and one of our trainers will be happy to help you out. If you're having resolution or speed issues, please check out the lower right corner of your video screen. The cluster of four arrows toward the right makes this video full screen while the gear icon allows you to select the size of your video. We recommend leaving this or setting it to auto because this will allow you to adjust the resolution if your internet speed is not working well today. Also, feel free to download and follow along with our class documentation. This is not a manual, but it is a nice way to follow along as well as being a reference after the class. Go ahead and scroll down your screen just a bit and you should see the download link. So let's get to it. There we are. All right. Now, before we get too deeply into this, uh, I'll mention that as I go through today's live lesson, everyone, please remember to use the chat window to ask any questions. And let's get started with the with a definition first. We're going to, going to create a new lead, and a lead is usually a person whom we've met and whom, whom we'd like to do business with. So we might have met somebody at a trade show or at a social function, or it might be somebody that has contacted us expressing interest in what we do. However, we found this person, it's a maybe business opportunity. Now let's go to our Zoho home screen. You'll see it up there. Let me click on it. Here we are. Now, don't worry if your home screen does not look exactly like mine because depending on how your system administrator or you may have configured your Zoho um, instance, um, yours may look slightly different from this one. Uh, at the very least, you'll have a Zoho control bar up at the top of your window here. That should look similar to mine. Uh, if you'd like more information about how to configure your Zoho environment, one of the first classes I think you should check out is class 101. Uh, send me a chat message or send me an email and I'll uh, show you how you can find that lesson. All right, so for most Zoho installations that I've seen, the leads module will be up in the Zoho control bar immediately to the right of the home screen. Once again, this can all be configured. Uh, we can do incredible amounts of customization. Uh, in fact, we have a lesson on customization where we uh, show you how to change this. But for most Zoho installations, you'll find the leads module or a link to the leads module up at the top of your Zoho control bar toward the left side there. Let's go there and create a new lead. Just a quick reminder, there are three ways that we can create a lead. We can click on the plus button there, immediately to the left of the word import. We can click on the plus button in the Zoho control bar. And the first option that we usually see there is the lead option that lets us create a new lead. Or 
we can import a whole bunch of leads. This is if we want to um, import a large number of leads at one time from a file. As I'm creating this lead, you should be aware of two things. First, here we go. First, anything with a red, any field that has a red underline below the field name is a required field. It has to be completed. It can't be left blank. And second, the more data that we have in our Zoho instance, the better. Actually, I'm going to go back from there. The more data we have in our Zoho instance, the better it is. Um, there are limits to this, of course, but as a general rule, you should err on the side of having lots of data in your CRM. I'm going to create a lead here slightly quickly, um, skipping over some of the obvious fields. Company, the future, Inc. Our lead's name is, let's doctor this person, Dr. Jim McCoy. All right, you can see that company and last name, those fields have to be filled in. We can't leave those blank. But as I say, the more information we put in here, the more useful your, uh, your uh, CRM becomes. Mobile and website are good. Um, let's look at the lead owner first. This is up here, uh, the very first thing. Uh, the lead owner is the person who is responsible for the lead. In an organization where you might have many people going out and generating or finding leads, this can be helpful. So, for example, uh, if I've assigned one person to make calls and another person goes out and goes to trade shows, each of them may be generating leads, and when they enter this information, when they enter the information for their leads, whether they do this through an import function or manually, as I'm doing it right here, it's helpful for them to be able to distinguish who brought which lead into the organization. So I'm going to set this. I can search through my users. This is our Zoho training instance, so we only have two users here the live administrator and the live general user. I've logged in as administrator, so I'll leave that as it is. Uh, if I have more than, if I have multiple people in the organization, I can either scroll through a list or I can search for users by typing some of the letters in their names. There we go. The lead contact information is helpful. Um, let's say the title is ships doctor email is um, Jim McCoy at um, marksgroup.net uh, phone number facts are all these are all useful the more information we have the ha the the more useful the more sorry the more information we have here the more useful our CRM will be for example, if we don't have contact information in our CRM, then when the time comes to pursue this lead and to try to convert this lead into a contact, then we're maybe out of luck in terms of trying to figure out how to reach this person. The lead source is helpful. If you want, uh, here are the options that we have. We can either select none, or we can, there's a pick list here. We can, uh, the lead source may be an advertisement, a cold call, an employee referral, an external referral, an online store, partner, public relations, sales, email, alias, seminar partner, internal seminar, trade show, web download, web research, chat, campaign, Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Plus. Uh, as with almost, I think, every pick field that is available in Zoho, uh, you can customize this pick field if you have the right level of access. So let's say that we met Dr. McCoy at a trade show. Um, we do have a lesson on field customization if you'd like to learn how to handle that pick list. Um, then we have the lead status and lead follow-up date fields. 
From a business standpoint, these are super important. It is both horrible and pathetic to have a business with dozens or hundreds of leads and no plan to follow up on them. So if you're the sort of person who feels that leads status and follow-up dates should be mandatory, it's possible for a user with administrative credentials on the Zoho system to go into the settings page and force something to be present in any of these fields. Um, for our lead status, let's say we'll set the lead status to pre-qualified. I'm going to set some information Let's see, the industry, of course, is a large enterprise. These are in alphabetical order, I believe. Large enterprise, the annual revenue of this organization. By the way, annual revenue, I should point out, is the revenue of the organization to which the lead belongs. So for Jim McCoy, the organization, the company is The Future Inc., the organization's annual revenue let's say is $1 million. Um, the email opt-out can be handy there in terms of if you've collected leads and you, will, you may wanna keep them as leads without necessarily hitting them with email. Um, that does happen. All right, For, I can scroll down through here and I can see more information. I can set the address of the company. Let's say um, one main street, big city, state is pencil. Oh, let's leave the state as a two letter initial. One nine zero 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 country, and we'll leave the country blank. All right. I'm going to save that information for now. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to set, set a description as well. Met Dr. McCoy at a trade show in, actually, you should always mention exactly which trade show. Exobiology here, trade show in DC in December, 2018. Expressed an interest in small furry animals. All right, I'm going to save that lead. There we go. So there's my lead, Dr. Jim McCoy from the Future Inc. Off to the left here, off to the left here, we have details. Uh, we, have, uh, we have quick links to any parts of this record. So as I scroll through this record, here's our hot information area. We can choose which fields are shown here. There is the actions area that alerts us to things that are relevant, actions that are relevant to this lead. I can hide the details or I can show them. Actually, I'm going to take the description out of here. I'm going to copy that. Actually, I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to put the description information into the notes field instead. There's my note. Because we're going to see how the note is useful a little bit later. But as you'll see here, notes, attachments, products, open activities, notes, attachments, products, open activities. This is a quick navigation area. Sometimes your Zoho instance, you'll see this arrow that's off to the left of you, the center of your screen, and you can click on it to toggle open the quick navigation area. This is a useful area to have. And if your screen is wide enough, or if you're happy enough, lucky enough to have multiple screens, I definitely remember, I recommend keeping that open. All right, uh, where are we? Um, now, if your leads page doesn't look exactly like this one, don't panic. 
Um, it's possible that uh, different Zoho configurations have are set up in different ways. It's not something to worry about. Um, do let us know by email or drop me a chat if your screen looks staggeringly different from this one, and we'll see if we can help you out. So there are the details that we can hide and show. Now, uh, up here, we have pre-qualified. Um, farther down, let's see where we have uh, commercial data. There we go. There's our score summary. Um, if you may have scoring information set up in your Zoho installation, you may see some scores here that change when you engage in certain actions with your lead. Uh, this is incredibly powerful stuff. Um, that gets into some of the advanced functionality of a CRM. Certainly recommend that you take a look at this or um, let us know if you're interested in finding out more about scoring. Um, this can be particularly handy in situations where you have more than one lead or where you have many leads and you want to filter your leads according to which ones are most likely to uh, result in revenue or other business activity that is valuable to your organization. All right, uh, let's scroll a little bit farther down. I can add attachments. So if I've taken a picture of Mr. McCoy or myself with Dr. McCoy, products, open activities, these are things that we may want to do with our client or with the lead. We think events that are relevant, tasks, um, emails. If we've integrated Zoho with our email system, it is possible to um, see those emails here. We can even send email from within Zoho if we've configured it to integrate with our email programs. All right, let's say it's time to convert. Let's go on to converting our lead into something more useful to our organization. And for this, I'm going to go to a PowerPoint highlight. Here we go. I'd like to review what we're doing here. When we first met Dr. McCoy, when Dr. McCoy uh, was working at a remote science station in a place far, far away, and we talked about the possibility of doing business, specifically with respect to controlling the proliferation of small furry mammals. Sometime later, we contact Dr. McCoy again, Perhaps he, he contacts us and says, hey, I think we should do business. This is not the same as signing a deal. This is not the same as winning a deal, but it's a step in the right direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm here in uh, Dr. Jim McCoy's record. Let me go back out one level. Here are all of our leads. There's Jim McCoy. I'm going to click on that lead. I'll close that for now. Up here at the top, I have the option to convert Jim McCoy from a lead into a contact. Now, here's what happens. I start with a lead, and that's when we first introduce ourselves to uh, introduce ourselves, where we greet each other, we find out something about the lead. Uh, or, the, or the organization that the lead works with. And then when we convert, that's where we say, I think we should do business together. So we're taking basically the lead. I hate this phrase, but we're going to say use it anyway. When we take our lead to the next level, what happens is Zoho will create two records as uh, instead of having a record in your leads area, Zoho will create a contact record and an account record. The account record is basically the information that we have on Dr. McCoy's organization. So the Future Inc. was the organization that we created where Dr. McCoy works. That becomes the account. And the contact, Jim McCoy, is a contact who works at that account. So let's actually see that in action. Let's go over to here, and we're going to convert Dr. Jim McCoy. 
Zoho allows me to, um, Zoho allows me, actually it tells me, it offers, oh, Zoho tells me that the Future Inc. already exists. So I'm going to add Jim McCoy to the Future Inc. And at the same time, I can optionally create a new deal immediately from this screen. And I can assign the converted information to a new team member. So here's my assign, assignee. Now, the reason that this may be useful to you um, is because you, we may have situations where the person who, uh, or the team that establishes leads may be different from the team that handles what happens to the leads afterwards. I wonder if I have a slide on that. There we go. So why should we worry about record ownership? If we have the lead generation team is separate from the lead development team, what will happen is we want to take a lead, the owner of the lead, and say, well, when that lead becomes a contact, uh, so when the deal is in the development stage, maybe we assign somebody else to, uh, to that record. So this is the owner of the new record. That's what we see here. And of course, I have a drop down list there. Um, I'm going to create a deal right now. Uh, we don't worry about the layout option at this point. We may have more than one layout depending on the nature of the deal and the contact. The deal name is mandatory. Uh, we've already got it filled in here as the future ink, at least the starting point for it. Um, small furry animal um, control two. I'm going to assign a value to the deal. Let's say uh, 100,002 dollars. The closing date is mandatory. I'm going to set this for the end of February. Zoho gives, tells us the required format for the date. And of course, we can uh, select it from the click uh, to click on the calendar tool there. Next up, we have the stage of the deal. For the time being, we'll just set that to qualification. If you're not already familiar with the language of deal stages, send me a comment or drop us an email and we'll send you a handy infographic that explains these commonly used business terms. The next field, campaign source, is something that we will discuss in greater detail toward the end of this class. We'll just leave it blank for the time being. And the last field in this quick deal creation area is the contact role. This is a handy thing to have when we get back in touch with our contact at the company. We might address that person as a kind of decision maker or as another person who has a part to play in making those decisions. Of course, you really don't want to get this wrong. So if you're not sure of this information, you may want to leave it blank for the time being, pending further research. For now, I will designate our contact as the decision maker. Once again, as we're setting this up, we're thinking about how this is going to be used by a salesperson or a deal, a business development uh, operative who is trying to establish a uh, client uh, business relationship with this particular contact. So the more we know about the contact's role, the more we know about the contact, the more we, uh, the better we are able to, to shape our language and uh, to uh, address that person appropriately as we work on developing the business relationship. At the bottom of our screen, we have a button that asks us to confirm that we would like to convert our lead into a contact. I could cancel at this point. I'm not going to. I'm going to confirm. Zoho then tells me that um, we have the, that it has successfully converted Jim McCoy from the Future Inc. into a, an, account, an account that was already there, a contact, and 
uh, Jim McCoy is related to the deal that is titled Small Furry Animal Control Number 2. And there's a little pop-up window down in the bottom right corner telling me that Zoho is, is happy. Um, this, uh, this is part of Zoho's ability to gamify work. Some organizations like to cast this sort of thing as a competition. Maybe there are bonuses attached to converting leads into accounts. All right. I can go back to leads here now, and in fact, I will do that. Because what we want to see is we want to see whether Dr. Jim McCoy is still in our list. Let's sort this list alphabetically. Um, should be somewhere around here, right? Later, we go later to Shaw. Shaw. So I don't think McCoy, uh, Jim McCoy, is there. What we can do is. Let's be sure and let's see whether Jim McCoy is in our contacts area. Scroll down and there's Jim McCoy from the Future Inc. He's the ship's doctor and there's his contact information. What has happened is Zoho has taken my lead. We created a lead and when I converted uh, Jim McCoy, uh, Zoho created a contact record for Jim McCoy. And Zoho also created, or it already had, a, I should say, it already had a record for the future Inc. Let's see. There is the future Inc. All right. Let's go to the, um, let's go to, uh, let's go to the future Inc. There's Dr. Jim McCoy. We can see that there's a contact and there's a deal, small free animal control for $100,002. That deal is in the qualification stage. Um, the address for the company, let's see if it's there. Oh, there's the note. And there's our deal name, small furry animal control number two. There's the contact information for Jim McCoy. So let's scroll back up. When we hover over the deals area of the account record, we see a downward facing arrowhead. Let's see. There we are. see there are the deals so there's that downward facing arrowhead to the right this is in the deals section of this account um, when we click on that we can choose which columns that we see here right now I've got deal name let's close that window I've got the deal name the amount the closing date the stage success probability the type and the who made the modification Let's say I don't think I need the type column there. I click on that downward arrow. There is a downward arrow. It's not there unless I hover. So if I'm somewhere else, if I'm clicking elsewhere, you won't see it. But when I hover in this area, there's a downward arrow. I can uncheck the word type. And when I do that uh, and save my changes, the type column is no longer here. On the other hand, the deal name, amount, closing date, stage, probability, and modifi modified by, that's still present. Maybe I want to change the order of these. If that's the case, what I can do is, let's say I want to make the closing date more important than the amount, or I want to just move things around. I can click, uh, pick up the closing date and move it from top to bottom corresponds to left to right so now when i save these changes i should see deal name and then the closing date and then the amount let's see what happens let's see if that's what actually happens yeah 
deal name, closing date, and amount. All right. We can also see a text button to create a new deal there. There's one right there. Zoho makes it very easy to put more data into the system. Scrolling back up, there is my contact associated with this account. The name is clickable, so our cursor turns from an arrow into a pointer, so I can click on that, and we go to the account page. Sorry, there we go to the contact page for that person. So just to recap, a lead can be converted into a possible deal. When that happens, an account is created, and the person who was a lead now becomes a contact. So let's go back to our account. The Future Inc. When an account has more than one contact associated with it, right now there's only one person here, um, we can see it uh, in a hierarchy view so that we can see who's who when we have more than one person associated with an account. And we need to keep in mind what those pers uh, where those people are, what those people do in the organization. Uh, farther down in the accounts, we see in the account page, we see activities, open activities, emails, and closed activities. I'm going to create a new call to our contact at that company. So within the account, uh, within the account record, I'm going to contact a contact at that company. When I click on the magnifying glass or the search, it shows me who are the contacts that are related with this, to this account. And I can select Jim McCoy. Subject call to confirm meeting. Um, and let's say uh, the purpose of this is that I'm prospecting. The account is the future. This is an outbound call. That's our default here. And actually, I'm going to schedule that call for tomorrow. And 10.31 is a fine time for that call. Um, call to discuss plans to control small furry mammal numbers. The more information that we put into this pop-up, the more effective we are going to be in using our CRM. Otherwise, you're going to be in that horrible place where, oh, I hope you haven't been there, but I suspect most of us have, where you have a piece of paper with somebody's name and maybe a phone number and a note that says, must call. And it was really obvious to you at the time what you were going to call about. And you were so excited about it. And it was really great. And it was going to be a wonderful thing for your business. And four days later, you can't remember anything about the name. The phone number is smudged. And you have the uneasy feeling that you've missed a critical deadline to get your proposal into a company that was going to help your organization succeed remarkably well. Yes, it's traumatic. Uh, some of the options that you see in the call type pick list are customizations that we've made in our Zoho configuration. Uh, some might look slightly different. We have an entire class for system administrators who want to get started with customizing a Zoho instance. Please call or uh, drop me a message, send me an email if you're interested in finding out more. All right. I'm going to save that. And so now I have an open activity. Zoho wants me to call to confirm a meeting. Um, let's say that I've done this task. If I've already completed this task, I can say mark that as completed. And what will happen is Zoho says, okay, this was the call. 
this is when it happened. I can set these numbers. Say it was for 15 minute and 37 second call. And I leave the description as it is. I click save. And now it's no longer an open activity. It is a closed activity. Let's see if I can change that. Um, I'm going to set the set of follow up activity. Subject will be email. Actually, I'll make it another call. The due date will be the 25th. Uh, and I'll say the description of this activity. Um, call again to confirm demo meeting. I'll save that and now I should have back here there's another action coming up on the 25th if I scroll down you should see that I also have an open activity now and as well as my closed activity as with almost all of Zoho's features, I can click on the pencil icon to edit the activity. Uh, once you close an activity, once you have an activity here in the closed area, well, here I can edit it or I can mark it as completed. If my activity is completed, let's see, actually, let me skip through this. Oops, okay, we're going to get into that, sorry. So. Uh, once an activity is completed, I can choose to edit it again, or I can choose to delete it. Um, whether maybe you're deleting the task because it's finished, um, whatever, whenever you decide to delete it, uh, the problem with that is that it deprives you of your record. You won't know what you've done in the past. The best time, maybe the only good time to delete an active task is when you've made a mistake but you can't delete an open activity. You'll see, notice that when I hover here, I can't change that. But down here, I can trash the activity. That's a quick look at the accounts module. Let's take a look at the contacts module. If I'm in an account, let's go back to accounts for a moment. Let's go to the future Inc. If I'm in the accounts area, I can easily get to one of the contacts associated with that account by clicking in the hot area down here. There are the contacts associated with the future Inc. Um, I probably have, if I am lucky enough to have Dr. Jim McCoy's photograph, I can click on this and upload a photo for Dr. McCoy. As with uh, the account module, we have five fields of basic information about the particular contact. I can choose which information I see up in this area. For example, I may decide that the title is more important than the record owner. The email is important. Phone number is not as important as mobile. So instead, I'll change that to uh, date of birth or whatever is important in terms of your relationship with this particular contact. Um, as, with the Zo as with the account module, there are the five main fields. Uh, just below that, we have deals that our Dr. McCoy is associated with and an action that uh, the next important action or multiple actions that we have to deal with that involve Dr. McCoy. Excuse me for one moment. All right, we're back. Um, just slightly up and to the right here, there's the best time to contact. Uh, this is a nifty feature that is present in some versions of Zoho. Uh, where it may can suggest one or more optimal times to call. Um, this is initially based on default values, but Zoho does adapt its recommendations based on times when I've successfully completed calls with other individuals at that account and other contacts. Um, now, Mr. Scott is involved in that deal right there. A bit further down, we have the contact information for Mr. Scott. 
Uh, this is carried over from the Leeds area. Uh, now, something to watch out for is when we created uh, Dr. McCoy as a lead, um, when we created Dr. McCoy as a lead, we entered this note about meeting him in uh, DC on December 20, uh, in December 2018. Uh, that information was carried over into the contact information. All right. This works very easily. It works very well. Um, obviously, if Mr. Scott gave us his personal address, we would have that. Um, uh, in general, this works very well. Uh, if the personal address is not the same as the business address, that can get confusing and you may actually need to specify which address is which. So you may actually have a different address in the account versus in the contact. Now, because of the way Zoho ties information together and makes it really, really easy uh, to navigate among similar records, uh, there are three really easy ways to get to a deal. So. If I can get to a deal, which is where we're winding up with today, let's say I'm in an account record. If I'm in an account record, any existing deals will be in this area. For example, there's one right now. If I'm, that's in a contact record, I can be in an account record. Let's go to the Future Inc. In the account record, there are two deals here. For the account uh, and of course up in the top of the Zoho control bar either the, de the word deals will either be here in this area of modules or it will be in this searchable drop-down list of modules so clicking on the deals button up here in the uh, so that we get to the deals module uh, that shows me a large number of deals including some that are still in progress as well as those that are closed for any reason. And in some ways, this is not the most plausible way to get to the deal that you're looking for. In practice, you'll probably be working in or studying an account or a contact, and you'll go to the deal from one of those screens. So let's say that we're back in contacts. There's um, Jim McCoy, and there's a deal that Jim McCoy is associated with. Now, here's the screen for the deal. This is where we're working the deal. Remember that deal? We expected it to be worth $100,002. That's a one with five zeros at the end of it. Oh, four zeros and a two, right? Uh, well, you got four zeros and a two, but it's 10,000 there instead of 100,000. Um, Zoho has obviously got its mathematics wrong, right? Well, not really. It actually is correct. Um, when we look at the probability of this deal success is 10, as in so 10% probability of success. So Zoho scores this as an expected revenue of $10,000 and 20 cents. So it's 10% of $100,002. The probability of success is reflected in the stage of any given deal. So the farther along we progress in a deal stage, or the later the stage, the higher the probability of a successful outcome and the higher the value of the deal. Let me show you what that looks like. Here, our stage is set to qualification. If I go to the next stage, needs analysis, well, that's the next stage of the deal process in Zoho. The way we set it up says, well, that's a 20% chance of success, and my expected revenue is now $20,000.40, so 20% of $100,002. Value proposition moves us to 40%. Um, so does this always work out this, uh, the way it should? Uh, no. Sometimes we get all, all the way through to a deal only to burn out on the closing negotiations, which then reduce the value of the deal to zero. But the stage value equation is sufficiently informative that it provides an objective barometer on the health of the business. Now, as with any other type of record, these five key fields here can be changed. So we can set the deal owner, 
we can change that to the account name, but we've already got the account name up there. Oh, actually, that's the um, that's the deal name up there. Um, we can say, let's say that instead of the closing date, I want to see the next step. And I can edit that. Maybe I want to leave the closing date there. Um, if we see a little blue pencil beside a field, it means we can change that field. So here we can change the stage. We can set it back to qualification and save our change. The little blue pencil means that we can edit what we're looking at. Um, so let me show you the whole timeline for a deal. Let me show the whole structure for that. Let's go to this screen here. In the way that Zoho is initially configured, the default configuration, there are six different stages uh, for a deal. This is a single graphic that spells it out. So we go from qualification to needs analysis to the value proposition to the, where you identify the decision makers, you submit a proposal or a price quote, you engage in negotiation and review, and at the end of that, hopefully you've closed or won the deal. Of course, at any given point, the deal might turn sour for any number of reasons. And you might at any point need to mark the deal as closed and lost or closed and lost to competition. Looking beyond the intrinsic assumptions here, it's possible that your organization will walk away from a deal and be glad that it did so. Or you may win a deal that you later wish you hadn't. The way Zoho looks at it, though, winning the deal means you get the cash and losing the deal means that you don't get the cash. So, it is possible for an administrator to change the names of these stages um, and or to remove stages in the process. It's possible for the administrator to set different percentages, different percentage values for different stages of the deal. Uh, it's possible that a deal can't be advanced to the next stage without getting approval from an appointed manager within an organization. Um, this is essential in many organizations where there are formal deal development stages. We do have a lesson on this topic coming up. Please email or drop me a chat message if you're curious about it. Now, a little bit farther down, here's the stage history. Let's see. There's the scoring, descriptive information. There's my stage history. Um, this is where Zoho shows us how the deal has gone through different stages, right down to the minute that it happened. Uh, in most real life cases, uh, I'm not sure that you would see this many uh, changes in all different directions. Um, one interesting feature here is that the stage duration tells us how long a deal spent in any given stage. Uh, once you have a few dozen deals in your Zoho CRM, you or a manager will be able to gather some useful business intelligence about your sales process. So for example, you might discover that uh, all of your deals are spending far too much time or in, uh, disproportionately more time in needs analysis than in any other stage, which means maybe you can look at your processes and figure out a way to make them more effective. Um, depending on how your Zoho instance is set up, you may see two stages here beyond the two uh, two red ones. So here we go with our basic six stages, uh, qualification, needs analysis, value proposition, identified decision makers, proposal, price quote, and negotiation review, after which you can mark a deal as closed and won, closed and lost, or closed and lost to the competition. And there are two further stages here. There's closed, lost, closed one. Um, that can be handy when you're tracking uh, old data from archives. Uh, so you're not actually working with a, a active deal, but rather a deal that is uh, finished one way or another. Um, now we're going to go back through uh, the back end of deals for just a moment because there's a useful feature there. 
This class is intended for users rather than administrators, uh, but you should understand what we can be working with here. I'm going to go into the setup area, which is underneath the uh, crossed tools or in different versions of Zoho, it may be a cog or a gear. And I can go into customization of modules and fields. And then I'm going to go into deals. I can click on that. Actually, let me go back one level. Deals. There we go. Um, I'm going to go to stage probability mapping. Now we do have a uh, we do have a lesson a class on module customization, which is where uh, we can deal with all sorts of um, all sorts of details, very greedy details, very low level details on how the deals module is configured. Right now, we're just going to look at what we call the stage probability mapping, where we have our six stages of a deal, the probability and uh, we're going to leave forecast type and category as they are for the time being. Uh, I can add a new stage here. Let me do this. What I can do is I can look at a stage. Actually, let me check something out here. Oh, good. Good. So the way that I can add a stage here is I can click on one of these buttons. So plus or minus. Minus means that I can delete this stage. Plus means that I can add a stage. I'm going to add a stage. I'm going to say check with legal. I'm going to sign it 50. I'm going to say actually MF. I'm going to prepend my initials so that other trainers know that this is a uh, stage that I've added. I'm going to set the probability to be 50%. I'm going to leave the stages open because it's not a terminal point and I'm going to say that that's a pipeline category and I'm going to save my changes now I'm going to leave that as it is I'm going to go back to deals I'm going to go to my latest deal and now we see that my stages qualification needs analysis value proposition and next up check with legal and we assign that to be a 50% probability. So that actually works out. It's half of our actual full deal value of $100,002. All right. Uh, I'm going to go back to the customization area and make one more change there. When we look at deals, we can also look at contact roles right there. We looked at these earlier in the lesson. Uh, these are the roles that we assign to a lead who becomes a contact. Um, once again, how to edit these, I can either edit the role itself or I can add one with a plus, uh, with a plus marker or I can delete this role with a minus marker. Let me show you that. There we go. So you can see here that I can click on the name to rename it, adding a role with a plus, deleting a role with a minus, and I can drag up or down to reorder the list. So let me go back to my live screen here. So I can move this by clicking and dragging. I can add a role and I can delete a role. I'm going to cancel for the time being. I like those roles as they are. All right. Let's go back to the deal. If there's a task that needs doing, there will be a check mark and a banner on the right side of that record. Um, right here. There's no immediate task associated with this deal. Right now, I'm going to um, close this deal as a win and save that. Now, um, 
I can still get into the record. Let me just click back. There are my deals. The record is shown as closed and one. I can still edit it here. This is a great feature because it means that I can enter precise end of deal information. There are some other popular CRMs that lock records to read only status when the, when the deal is closed, either for winning or losing. This way, I can still go in and add attachments and notes. But now I'm actually going to set this to closed and lost. Interestingly, Zoho gives me a free text field that says the reason for the loss. Um, I can say, um, we're not able to control the small furry mammals. Uh, this is very useful insofar as it allows us to uh, look back at a deal and remember or uh, provide an right, uh, explication for why the deal was lost. Uh, the same thing happens. Let me cancel for now. If I say lost to competition, again, I have a free text field that allows me to specify why the deal was lost. Now, before we leave, I'm going to draw your attention to one more bit of information. Um, on the left-hand side, right down near the bottom, I have a sales summary area. Here we can see that the lead was immediately converted, so there was no time between creating the lead and converting the lead. The sales cycle duration was 36 days. The overall sales duration was also 36 days. That's because I set the deal to be closed 36 days afterwards, uh, basically on February 28th. For a manager or a sales analyst, this information is absolute gold. It tells you about the effectiveness of your sales machine. Actually, let me change that date to, let's say, change the date to the 26th of, actually, wait, today we have the 23rd. Let me change it to the 29th of January. And we'll see what happens down here with the sales cycle duration and the overall sales duration there. Our sales cycle duration is six and our overall sales duration is also six days. This tells you about the effectiveness of your sales machine. How long does it take for you to get from a lead to a deal? Finally today, let's look at the campaigns module. Now this module, which you'll also find up here in the Zoho control bar, or if it's not listed there, you can search for it in this list drop down list either by visually looking for it or by typing the first two letters the reason it's not there is because it's already here this module does not let you create campaigns such as sending an email blast or buying advertising this just lets you track what you're doing in those areas and cross-reference that with your deal machine right now i'm going to create a campaign I'm going to call this, this is a, the type is an email campaign, a uh, small furry mammal blast one. And I'll prepend my initials to it so my fellow trainers know that it's something I've created. Um, this isn't creating the email blast itself, just the fact that I created an email blast, whether it's using MailChimp, Aweber, um, manually using my uh, contact list in my email program, um, or another service. Um, I'm going to project revenue. Expected revenue is uh, $15,000. Budget of this cost is $10,000. Actual cost was 9,800. And let's see, budgeted actual costs, description, send an email to all contacts, 
telling them that we can help them with their small furry mammal problems. I'm going to save that. Now I'm going to go back to my deals module. Uh, let's see. Small free. There we go. Closed in one. There's my deal. Now, Zoho, I'll admit, could be a little bit more uh, easily, uh, could make things a bit easier uh, in terms of editing deals. If I just click on the deal name, I'm working the deal. I'm describing it. Um, to edit the deal, I want to work. Uh, I want to click on the arrow at the far left of the screen. Here now I'm editing the deal. I'm not working it. I'm editing it. Um, I'm changing the way the deal is defined. I'm going to change this deal slightly. In the lower right area here, lower right area of this window, I can set a campaign source. And let's say, where's the email last that I just created? I think that was the one that I just created. Actually, what I can do is I can find out, see, I can create a new campaign there. I'm not going to. I'm going to select Let's see, if I hover over that, uh, that's not the one. That's the one, uh, is that the one that I just created? Okay. All right, I'll go there. Blast that email list. That's my campaign source. And I'm gonna save the record. Now I'm going to go back to my campaign window. Blast that email list. There we go. So I've actually already associated this deal with another, uh, associated with this, this blast with another email. But you can see that the revenue now is that which is basically two deals that I've closed based on this campaign. Uh, let's let me go back to my deal. Blast that email list. Where am I here? Small furry mammals, animal control two. If I change that, uh, sorry, let me go back to my deal. Right, let me go back to my deal. And if I change this to closed and lost, when I go back to the campaign, there we go. My revenue has now decreased. So I can associate a contact with campaign two. So let's do this. Um, Let's go to my contacts area. I'm going to go to Jim McCoy. Here we go. There's my record for Jim McCoy. And let's see. I can scroll down to campaigns for that contact. Let's see where, there we are, there are campaigns. I can associate, uh, sorry, I can associate Jim McCoy with that campaign. Now what I can do is when I save this, actually it's already saved, I believe. When I go back to campaigns, I choose this campaign, we can now see that two contacts are associated with that list. And so I can associate the success of a campaign with the number of, uh, with the number of contacts that are associated, leads, contacts or accounts that are associated with it. 
and from the revenue as well. All right. Um, I'm going to change, I'm going to go back to Jim McCoy one last time. And I'm going to say, let's see, where is the status? Description, visits, closed activities. Where are my campaigns here? There we go. Okay, I can change the status from planned to responded. So I can actually show for each of my contacts whether that person responded to the campaign or not. Um, let me save. That's already been saved. So I'm going to go to campaigns one more time. And there we go. Two people responded from our contacts and none of our leads responded to that. All right. This makes it possible, really. The campaigns module makes it possible for us to measure the organization's marketing effectiveness. It's a really, really uh, powerful way to see how your campaigns are working, particularly in, in comparison to each other. And that wraps it up for us today. I would like to review what we went over. So let's go here. Today, we took a look at creating a new lead. We converted that new lead to an account and a contact. Uh, we started to look at the idea of deals, winning and losing deals. And we looked into market measuring our marketing effectiveness with campaigns. At this point, I have to ask, does anybody have questions about what you've seen today? Uh, we are live right now, so please use the on-screen chat if there are any questions that I can answer. Uh, I will wait for a few minutes to make sure that everybody's had a chance to either to ask a question in the chat window, or I'll also be checking my email to see if you sent a question that way.
All right, uh, I'm not seeing questions coming in at this point, so I will wrap it up today. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Please check out the calendar section of the MarksGroupLive.com website to see upcoming trainings um, and what will be going over. If you have any suggestions for other classes or how to adjust this class topic to make it more effective for you and your organization, please do email us at support at MarksGroupLive.com. Um, if I didn't get to your question during the chat, I do apologize. Please do email us at marksgrouplive.com and we'll answer that way. Thanks again for attending and we'll see you next time.